Welcome back to Just Scribble. I thought today we would talk about my A6 ring planner setup. As a perfectionist, I am always wanting to share like the final setup, not a perfect setup because honestly nothing is perfect, but that sort of nailed down setup. But I'm coming to terms with the fact that my ring planner system is never really gonna be completely nailed down. I do know that I'm gonna kind of find my groove and what I need and what I don't need, but one of the beauties of using the ring system and one of the reasons of using it is to be able to add things and take things away. And so I'm coming to terms with the fact that this is going to kind of evolve over time. And at certain times in our life, my ring planner system may be different. I may be using it for a different purpose or I may need different things in it. But I'm also realizing that it just takes a little bit to kind of work through what you need in your ring planner system and what you want. In a book bound system, I don't seem to struggle with that as much. I think partly because I've been a book bound planner for so long and partly because rings allows you to add a lot of things and move things around and you can't do that as much with a book bound system. So it kind of limits me and what I can do and kind of keeps reins on me. Whereas in a ring bound system, I can do pretty much anything, especially with all of the amazing shops and folks in the planner community that offer freebies. You could make a full ring bound planner system, probably plus another one just with freebies. So there are so many freebies available. You could really chunk your planner full of all sorts of things. And then of course you see the Instagram posts and reels and YouTube videos of people with these beautifully chunky ring bound planners with all of these inserts and all of this decor and all the things inside their ring bound planner. And there's just something about watching them flip through their chunky planners with all of their loose notes and post-it notes and their inserts and their trackers and their photos and all of the things. And it makes you want to do that too. It makes you want to have this huge, chunky, kind of messy planner system, or at least that's what it does to me. But that's really not me. And that's really not how I plan. And I really don't actually like a big chunky planner. And as I've been using my A6 ring planner system, I've realized that that's not really what I want for my ring planner system as much as I love watching their flip throughs and it makes me think, oh, that would be so cool to have all this stuff stuck in their planners. I actually want something more simple and what I need it for is something much more simple. So I'm gonna walk through how I have my ring planner system set up currently. I'm probably actually gonna take a couple of things out as well. And then I'm gonna talk to you about changes that I'm going to be making. And then I'll also mention some of the things that I have taken out because I have actually changed this up and taken things out already, but I wanna take out even more. But this is my A6 ring planner from BDS. This is in their ready to ship. It is in their Alizon color of their Touch Me leather. I absolutely love this planner. I love the square shape. I love the rings. I do have the smaller rings on here. I love the way it feels. I love the neutral color. I love the dual pen loops. Probably the only thing that if I got it custom that I would do differently is maybe have some of these type pockets over here maybe, but I'm not really sure about that. I actually kind of enjoy this layout, although I am just now kind of figuring it out. I'm not big on decor in my planner historically, like I don't really decorate my planner pockets, but I am trying because it is the Christmas season and Christmas is my favorite holiday and winter is my favorite season. I'm trying to add decor to my planner. So I have added a little bit of decor that we'll talk about. So we'll talk about the decor and how I'm using this planner and then the changes that I'm planning to make. So I do have two pen loops. In this pen loop, I have been keeping a retractable highlighter from Right Tech. I have a set of these. They're in a sort of neutral color. I'm actually probably going to change out the color, but this is the one that I have been using and it actually fits in this pen loop the way it came ready to ship, which is awesome. This one normally has my pen in it, but I took it out in the other room and I forgot to put it back in. So this one normally has a Uniball One or an Inner Gel or something like that. So I do have some papers in the back pocket. I'm not a huge fan of back pockets and I don't use them much, but I have found in this, it's kind of nice. These papers are related to the family that our department has adopted for work and it has their wish lists in it. So I've kept that back there so that that way I can shop for them. And then I have nothing in the zipper pocket right now, but I do plan on adding probably a few tabs there, maybe some paper clips, maybe some sticky notes. In this pocket, I just have some stickers from Redbubble that I had bought and so I stuck them there so that I would remember that I had them. The planner decor that I have is pretty simple. I have this paper clip that has this sort of gemstone on it. I have no idea where I got this from. I've had it forever. It's actually not my favorite paper clip. It doesn't really actually hold paper really well, but I think it looks really pretty there and it stays nicely on that pocket, but it does make 
a little dent over here because it sticks up so far. So I'm not sure if I'll keep that permanently. And then this right here, this is a sticker from a Live Love Posh sticker book. And I put some overlay on it so that it would have some like hollow sparkle on it. And then I stuck the sticker on a piece of cardstock and then I cut it out so that it would have this like longer little piece so that it would stick down in the pocket and stay. And then this is a magnetic pin that says always tired. And then in the secretarial flap, I just have this card from Create With Pen because the colors kind of match the planner and I think it looks cute. This ring protector is from Moterm and it does work and fit on here nicely. I'm not 100% sure that I wanna keep this on here. Although I do like that it protects the leather from the rings so you can't really feel your rings here and then your rings don't like rub onto your leather here. It does bulk up the planner just a little bit and so I'm not 100% sure that I'm gonna keep this on long-term but I do have it on there currently. And then in the back pocket, I have this red card from Planner Press. It's like a washi card. I'm gonna put a task list on there with little like transparent sticky notes. I have a gift card. I have this sticker that I did that same thing from Live Love Posh that I stuck on cardstock and added the overlay just so I could stick it in the pocket. And then I have this card from Live Love Posh that says a dream is a wish your heart makes from Cinderella, which is my favorite Disney princess movie and actually my favorite like quote from a Disney movie. So right now I just kind of have this stuck in here. It's not very long. I probably should have put it on a larger piece of cardstock. So I may paper clip it or glue it to another piece of cardstock so that it stays in there better. But right now I just have that Be Merry stuck right there and I don't have a pen there right now. So in the front I do have a leather fly leaf. This came with the planner. This is one of the things that I'm actually going to be taking out. As much as I do think aesthetically it looks really nice and obviously this protects your inserts from anything you have over here, like my little paper clip. It's a little bit chunky. And so what I've decided is that I'm going to instead put this little pocket. This is a jelly pocket from Cat Espresso Co. So I'm gonna put this instead because it will still serve the same purpose, but as you can see, it is thinner, so we'll add less bulk. And that way I can put a, a little stack of sticky notes inside here or a photo or something like that. I do have another little sticker that I put on cardstock and did overlay tape on. It's a little gingerbread house from Live Love Posh. So I had that stuck on here. So I'm gonna put it on here instead. I just clipped it on with a paper clip. So it'll look like that. And then I have a clear piece of acetate. And then I have a vellum that I created. I really like it. And it still kind of matches my Christmas decor because the pinks and reds. Then I have my task reminder sheet. This is a trigger list. This is a freebie from Plan With B. So I have that. I haven't really referred to it much, but I thought it might be helpful. And then let me close this back. And then I have my dividers. So I have changed the dividers in this planner a few times because I'm trying to figure out really what sections that I need and that I want. Like I said, I initially when I set this up, I kind of threw everything into it that I saw everyone else putting into their ring planner system. And then I realized that some of that stuff, like there was a mood tracker, it was, it was super cute. It had little circles that were yellow that you drew a little smiley face in or a frown face in. And so it was a mood tracker for the month. I had put that in there, but I was never filling it out. I was never going back to it. And I have a mood tracker in my new wellness planner from Haru Planner that I'm using for 2024. So there was no need for that. So I took that out. There were some other trackers that I had in here. I really wasn't using them. And so I took those out as well. And then I took out some extra papers and then I keep changing up kind of the tabs. I do think that my overall sections, um, which are the tabs on the side right here, I don't think that those are gonna change. I think those are gonna stay the same. Some of these are subdivided into further sections. Those are gonna change a little bit, I think. But the sections that I have for this planner are lists, plans, scribble, reference, and then in the back, I have a notes section. So in the list section, I have it further divided with tabs from the top. And all of these labels on here, these are from Narrative Hues. They're kind of like washi swatch stickers or overlay tapes. So I picked colors that were kind of pinky and peachy that would match the color of this planner pretty much all year round. 
and then I hand wrote the labels on them and I stuck them down. I may end up changing the names or changing it to like an actual printed label or a sticker, but this worked for now so I could find my spots and it has color and I think that it looks okay. So the first section is lists and I have that divided into four sections with these top tabs that I did the same way just with smaller stickers. So these are wider stickers and then these ones are narrower so you can see there. So I have that divided into inbox, dump, shopping, and extra. So in the inbox section, I have a freebie from Planner B. It just says inbox it. And then I just have random notes on here. And then I have a sticky note here of things that I want to put in this ring planner that I don't have in here right now. Primarily an order tracker, a place to put TV shows and movies that we want to watch, a gift section to keep notes on gifts, and then a bill tracker because I don't have that in here. And I realized yesterday that I need one. So I have a couple of these inbox inserts printed. And then the next section is dump. I'm probably gonna rename that, but I named it because it has a brain dump list. I can't show you the list on the other side because it does have things about the planner that I'm designing. But this, just like the inbox, just has a little brain dump section. I'm probably going to change out the inserts once I'm done with these with something different that I'm creating myself. I just want to name them slightly different and make them more customized for myself. So I'm gonna use them until I'm done with them and then I will replace them. So that is the brain dump section and everything that I printed in here is either printed on Kakuyo paper that I buy on Amazon. I buy it in A5 and A4 size and then I can cut it into A6 pages and I can print directly onto A6 or it is paper from Paper Penguin because she sells A6 ring bound inserts that you can print on. She sells pretty much all the ring bound inserts but she sells A6 ring bound inserts in Tomoe River paper and Cosmo Air Light paper and um, let's see, I think bank or B7 paper, a bunch. And I do have an order coming from her from her Black Friday sale. So when that comes, I will share it. But everything in here is printed either on the Kukuyo paper or it's a paper penguin insert because I like the paper to be really, really thin. So the Kukuyo paper is very thin. And so that's what that is. Then after that, I have my shopping list section. So this is a section we're gonna kind of clean out together because I haven't cleaned it out. So I do have two different shopping list inserts in here. And one of them is just a shopping list. And this is from Plan With B, and it is a freebie. And it just says shopping list. And I keep this one clipped together because I don't use this one as much and I wanna use it for non-grocery shopping lists. So I'm keeping that one clipped with my little paper clip. And then this is the one that I really, really love, but sadly I can't remember who it's from. So I will put it down here or I put it down in the description box after I look it up. But this is a meal plan insert. And so it has a place for you to plan your meal for the week for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack, and then a shopping list. And I really love this insert. So I'm gonna take out this one that's used and I have this one dated already. I need to put the end date, but I have it dated for next week. But the reason that I like this is because, because I go through first and I write down our dinners for the week. And as I write down the dinner, then I write the items that I need for that meal. And then when I write down the next one, I write the items that I need for that meal. Because I do all my grocery shopping online, I don't need it to be organized by the order of the grocery store. And so this way I don't forget an ingredient for a meal. So I write down dinners and I go one by one and write the shopping list. Then I go back and add notes if I want to about breakfast or lunch and snacks and then at the bottom I'll write like, oh, we need deodorant or cleaning products or something like that. I really love this insert so it's definitely staying in my planner because I've been using it and I really like it. So I just have, I don't even know how many, like a couple months worth printed. I don't really have to have that many printed. I just had already printed them so I decided to leave them in there. Next I have my extra tab. So I can't show you the first page on here because it has notes about the planner that I'm designing, but this just has lined inserts from Paper Penguin in it and it is just for anything else that I need to write down that I think about. Even though I have this note section in the back, I find I tend to write in the front more. So I like having extra paper in the front. After that, I have another one of these little pockets from Catspresso Co, but I'm gonna take that out because I don't need one there and it's just adding extra to my planner. So I'm taking that out. And then later, if I wanna add one back, I can. So the next section I have is plans and I have clear dividers at the bottom for plans. So the list section is divided at the top and the plans section is divided at the bottom. I did that on purpose, partly because it's easier to navigate if you know one thing is at the top and one thing is at the bottom. But also even in my regular planners, I tend to use bottom tabs more. I really like bottom tabs. 
And so since the plan section is the section I need to be in most often, it made the most sense to me that the plan section was the section that had the bottom tabs. So this section is divided up into five sections, but I've actually only labeled four of them and the names are going to change. So the way that the sections are named right now are glance, month, agenda, wellness, and then a blank one. But because I'm gonna change how I have this set up, I'm gonna to talk to you about that in just a second, I'm gonna be changing these names, but I don't know how yet. So I'm leaving this until I get my new inserts to print and then I will change it up. And I will obviously do another video once I've revamped this whole thing with my new planner insert and show you that as well. But I didn't wanna wait. I wanted to show this to you guys and kind of my thought process and just kind of be real with you guys about how I've had it set up and the changes I'm making and why I'm making them and all those kinds of things. So let's go through the plans section now. So this is the section that has already changed the most and that is going to change even more. When I first started setting up this ring planner system, I thought one of the great benefits of a ring planner system is that I can divide things up into sections and that that would be awesome because everything would have its own little place to live. And that is awesome, but it's also not really how my brain is working and not really how my planning is working. So I found that I didn't like things divided up quite that much, especially when it came to things that I needed to write down or track every single day. And so one of the changes that I'm making is to kind of consolidate some stuff. And then the other thing is I put too much in here. So I mentioned that I had like a mood tracker. I had that in my wellness section. I also had like a daily gratitude tracker and some other trackers. And so I had those in here but I was really never using them because that's not the purpose of this planner. And that's probably the biggest realization I've had with this planner is figuring out what I actually need from this planner. So this A6 planner, just to back up a little bit, this is my extension planner or my on the go planner. It's basically my brain binder. It is an extension of my main planner and an extension of my brain. It is something that I can carry with me on the go so that my planner can stay home. That way I only have to carry the necessities with me. So it's a little bit of a planner so that there's organization to it and there's places for like daily tasks and events and things like that. But really it's a place to dump everything from my brain so that I have one place instead of a whole bunch of notebooks or a whole bunch of sticky notes or random pieces of paper everywhere. So it's kind of a glorified notebook, a fancier notebook. And as I was using it, when I first started setting up, I realized I just made it too complicated. My word of the year for 2023 is simplify. And every time I've done something, especially my planners, I've been reminding myself, I really need to think about simplifying and really figuring out what I want and what I need out of a system and just using it for that. All the extra stuff, it's really, really nice and it looks awesome in flip throughs and it looks so pretty, but it really isn't necessary. And so I'm not a minimal person as far as like my planning style, cause I do add color and decor, but I am a functional planner first and foremost. And this just needs to do its job. And there was just too much stuff in it. So I took stuff out and I'm continuing to do that. So let's go through it and I'll kind of talk to you about it. But the first section is glance, which is like at a glance. I just didn't want to write at a glance. It does have a clear divider and then it has a vellum that I created. And then behind that are two at a glance planner setups. This one is a printable. Once again, I can't remember where it's from, so I'll put it down here or down in the description box. But this is one version, which was a printable that I got for 2023. And then this one is from my Take a Note A6 planner. So if you saw my Take a Note unboxing, I did share that I bought the A6 for 2024 and that I had deconstructed and taken apart my 2023 to use in this planner. So basically I took the pages out and punched them and put them in this planner because I thought it would be the perfect way to be able to use a take a note planner in my lineup and still get to use the A6 rings that I'm liking. Turns out it's not actually working. And so that's not actually what I'm gonna be doing for 2024. But when I deconstructed that planner, I put parts of it in here. So I did put this overview in here or your calendex or perpetual calendar, whatever you wanna call it. So I did put that in here. And then I also had this in here. As you can see, I did not fill either one of these out, partly because of when I moved into this planner and started using it most of the year or a lot of the year to three-fourths, I guess, of the year was pretty much done. And so I wasn't going to go back date and fill stuff in. But also I wasn't really sure how I wanted to use these. I will probably have something similar 
in my planner for 2024, but I'm gonna fill it out at the beginning of the year, like with birthdays and holidays and things like that, just so I have a quick reference of those types of things. But it's not gonna be for like pre-planning appointments or anything like that. Those go straight into my monthly. I don't wait to write them down. So it will be more as a reference of people's anniversaries and birthdays so we don't forget them. So I am gonna leave this one in here just because this is probably similar to the style that I will end up using but I'm gonna take the take a note one out because that's not the style I'm gonna be using. I'm not gonna use this perpetual calendar style. I'm gonna use this style so that I can color code things if I need to, like school holidays. So after that section, we have the monthly section. So I did, as I said, deconstruct a take a note planner. Oops. And so I put the entire monthly from that deconstructed planner in here. And then on the last page, I just used some stickers and washi to kind of cover up the last page just so that it wouldn't be like the first day of the weeklies for 2023. And I did fill in some information in here, not very much, but I did fill in a few things in here. I will have a monthly in here, but because I'm changing the weekly daily pages, it's gonna have the monthly built in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these out and then I'll just transfer stuff over when I get my new insert. But I will have a monthly, it won't be a take a note monthly because I'm not going to do this again and deconstruct it, but I will have a monthly, but I'm gonna go ahead and take those out. And then I may not have a monthly section. so. This kind of goes into the next section, the agenda section, and then also actually the wellness section. So when I did my RSTEL 2024 pre-order unboxing, I shared that I had bought an A6 from RSTEL to do what I did with this, cut up and use my wellness planner. So the take a note would be in the agenda section, which would be like our planner section, and then the RSTEL A6 would be in the wellness section. And one of the things that I realized, well actually I realized two things. One is that I didn't want to separate my wellness tracking from my regular planning pages. So I wanted one set of weekly slash daily pages. I didn't want to. And the other thing I realized is that I didn't really like the RSTEL and I'm gonna share that with you guys in a minute because it didn't have a page for every single day. It only had your weekly overview page and then it had three grid pages and it just wasn't enough space because I wanna combine everything together. So I reached out to Annie Plans, who's the designer of the RSTEL planners and she's actually making a printable for me. So the agenda section is gonna have that printable in there and it has monthly pages in it. and I believe it's bundled. So the months, so the month has the weeks and days of that month and then the next month and so on. And so I won't necessarily need a monthly section because it's going to be like January, February, March, April, and everything will be within the January month and everything will be in the February month, if that makes sense. Which means I may not use all of these tabs at the bottom. I may not actually have any division in this plans section. I really don't know yet. Um, so I'm leaving them here and it'll say month and agenda, but it may change when you see the next video once I got that print once I get that printable. So the next section in here I have is the agenda. This is the rest of the take a note. I'm gonna close this just so I can flip through it better. But this is the weekly part of the take a note planner. So the front page, which was the end of the week before Halloween in October, I used some stickers and a quote and washi to cover it up and make make it look pretty. So the back so the back of the monthly section looked like that and then the front of the weekly slash daily section looked like that. I thought it looked pretty together. It was seasonally appropriate. And then it wasn't just like a part of a week that was exposed. But this is the weekly from Take a Note. And so it has a weekly overview and then it has a half a page per day for your dailies. And this is what I had planned on using for like my main plans section in this planner, like lists and appointments and notes and all that kind of stuff for the week and for the days. But this isn't really working for me. I love the take a note planner so much and I used it for my work planner for a while and it was awesome until my job changed. I mean, it's a really great planner. I love their planners. And this makes me really sad because I thought this was gonna be the perfect way to use one in 2024, but it's really not working for me, really for two reasons. One is I need a full page per day. The half a page just really isn't enough. You can't really tell that from here because I wasn't using it for everything. I had other stuff on the wellness pages and some loose pages and all of that. And I was also kind of trying to figure out how to use this planner. But the other reason is that this has a timeline on it. 
as you can see there. And I don't need to time track in this planner. I do that in my regular planner. This is really supposed to be a simpler thing where I just have an overview of the events for each day so that I don't forget when we have to be somewhere or when my kiddo has something. And then a to-do list for the day and random thoughts and notes for the day. And for whatever reason, my brain isn't allowing me to use this insert without the timeline. I keep trying and it really, my brain really wants to use the timeline because it's there and I just can't get myself to not use the timeline. So if this was a page per day and the timeline was there, I don't think it would bother me as much, but because the timeline is there and it's only a half a page per day, if I actually use the timeline because that's how my brain is like working, then I don't have enough space for everything else. So this really isn't working for me. So I actually haven't been using this. So I do have all of November and December in here all the way until the end of the year. And then this like grid page that was in the back of their planner. So I do have this in here. I even have like things tipped in. This was some instructions from the caterer for Thanksgiving. I have things written down. I made notes on things and I tried to really make it work. But then this past week, it's just not working. Like I was gonna use it in a different way and this isn't really what I want. It's really not what I need, so it is coming out. And the Annie Plans printable will replace this and what's in my wellness tab. Okay, so the next section is the wellness. Like I said, there were other things in here. I did have a gratitude list. I did have a mood tracker. And then I had the A6 Aura Stella from 2023 that I deconstructed, similar to how I deconstructed the Take a Note. And I was using this or intending to use this for wellness. And then I decided that I didn't really like having my wellness here. And then our plans over here in a different section. So like in this particular week, so in this particular week, I had this for my weekly section with the things we had going on and like random notes. And then I also had this where I was tracking wellness things and tracking my food. And although this layout is great, it really wasn't working for me to flip back and forth. I really want to be able to do all of this and all of this on one page, which is why I asked Annie Plans if she could make the B6 Classic Daily from RSTEL, which is a weekly overview and then a day per page that are dated in the A6 size. And that's what I'm going to be switching to because I think that's gonna be enough space for me to combine both of these things into one thing. So this, although looked good and was functional, it wasn't functional for me because I really wasn't flipping back and forth. I really wanted to be able to like have this open on my desk at work and whatever day I was on, I could track what I wanted, write down notes, random thoughts, all the things, then take it home, transfer anything I needed to, to my planner, cross things off, migrate things. The next day, have my planner open on my desk. When I was out and about running errands, I could just flip to it. And I only had to flip to one section. If we were out to dinner, I didn't have to flip two different sections to write things down. I just find it needs to be more simple than that. I think I was just, part of it's wanting to use all the things, right? really, really adoring certain planners, like the Take a Note Planner, and really wanting to find a way to incorporate that into my lineup. And part of it was thinking I needed to kind of separate and section and compartmentalize things because other people do it and you see it or because you do it in other aspects of your life. Like I keep my work planner separate from my personal planner. But at the end of the day, that's not what this planner's job is. This isn't even my only planner. I'm going to have a planner in 2024, my A5 all-in-one unstacked from Wonderland 222. That is our everything planner. That's where everything is going to be. This is really just to be able to carry out and about with me so that I don't have to carry that giant brick with me all the time because, because it is huge. And also to have this be more of like a scrap paper type thing where once the page is done, I just take them out and I throw them away because I don't need to archive them. Even with the lists and the notes, the things can go into a commonplace book or into our planner, or I can purchase the shopping list items and then I throw it away. And that's really why I wanted to get into and try rings, which haven't been a system that I've used in a really long time. And I actually am really liking the rings. I'm just not there with my setup. So this wasn't working because I didn't want to go back and forth. So then the next week I decided instead I would use this for everything and I scrapped the, the take a note weeklies. And so instead of using the take a note weeklies, I was using this, which like I said, has a weekly overview. Then it has a, then it has a sidebar here that you can use for tasks. And then it has 
three grid pages that are undated. So what I did was I set it up so that I would have trackers and I would have sections for school and for just scribble. I had our overview so I could see when we had appointments or events and things like that. And then I divided this into a week on three pages. So I had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I divided Saturday and Sunday because we're home on Saturday and Sunday more. I don't need necessarily this for my to-do lists and things because my planner is sitting right there at home. This is more for when I'm out during the week at school events, at work, those kinds of things. So I did half a side for my wellness and half a side for my to-do list. And and it was okay. I mean, I wasn't super consistent. This was the week before Thanksgiving and things were a little bit crazy, but I wasn't super consistent with tracking my food down, as you can see. But I was also just running out of space. Even if I took out the washi, even if I wrote a little bit smaller, it just really wasn't what I needed. I kept trying. So I did it again the next week. This is the week of Thanksgiving. So I did it again the next week. I was more consistent with writing in it, but I was running out of space. And so this is when I realized I really needed a day per page. So this side won't really look that much different. The layout's a little bit different, but it won't look that much different. It'll still have like a weekly overview section, and then it will have a section for like to-do lists and like weekly trackers. But then I'll have seven dated daily pages for that week and then I'll go into the next week and so on. So this is what I'm using and it's working okay but it's not enough space so I will be changing out of this and I won't be using it and then also this has monthlies built into it and so will the printable from Annie Plans but the planner from RSL is a Sunday start monthly and a Monday start weekly which I just cannot do. So in order to use the monthlies, if I deconstructed that A6 RS Delta use in 2024, if it did have enough pages for a page per day, I'd have to redate the monthlies. Using the printable means that she's able to convert it to a Monday start for me, so I don't have to put any stickers or anything, and so that's awesome. So we'll have a monthly that will look kind of similar to this for the month, and then I will have my weekly over my weekly overview page and then a page per day. And what I'll probably end up having is just a month or two in this planner and then when a month ends I'll take it out and then I'll add the next future month and so on because I don't really need to have future months in this for future planning and things like that I can stick those things down in my inbox and then migrate them when I get home to our main planner so I don't want to keep a full year in here I don't have any intention of keeping a full year on here I really want it to be about focusing on the days and weeks of a particular month that I'm in if that makes sense. So I may only keep one month in, I'm not sure, but at the most probably two. So I am going to reorder this a little bit because I am using this until that printable comes. And I'm gonna leave, no, I'm gonna take out. I'm gonna take out November because November is over. We are in December, I cannot believe that. And I'm gonna take all these pages out and they will go in the trash. And then I'm going to put agenda in front because this really is going to be my agenda section. And I'll have my monthly overview and then, or my monthly. Oh, ignore the fact that there are like so many holes in here. I was cleaning out my hole punch and somehow I moved the holes. So when I went to punch my inserts, I had punched them wrong. And then I repunch them and it works just fine. It just has extra holes. So this is a week. So this is the week over you. And then what I did was I took pages from the back of the December and November. And I have now enough pages in here for the full first week of December because I don't know when that printable is going to be ready. So we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then and then Sunday, and then we'll go into the next week, Monday, Tuesday, and the next week, and then I'll put these pages in there, but I will probably be using that new insert before we get to Christmas Eve. And then I'm going to put this wellness tab back in, and I'm actually gonna move, these pages have some notes from a doctor's appointment, and that's probably what I'll use the wellness tab for if I keep wellness tab as like a name or a tab name. And then I have this blank one that just has blank pages. I haven't really decided what I'm using this for, so I've left it in there. But when I redo these tabs, I may switch to a different number of tabs or a different set of tabs that I have. 
So I may or may not have five and I may not have this section. Also, while I'm thinking about it, I have been using this little Today marker from RSL. I'm probably gonna stop using these actually. Um, I do like that I can very easily and quickly get to my day, but they cause a bump when you write. So when I go to write on the back of this page, I have a bump. And so unless I move it every single day, there's a bump. So I think instead I'm gonna use a repositionable tab and put that on the week that I'm on. And, and then I can find the week that I'm on, just flip to the page and then move it to the next week and so on. So I probably am not gonna use this going forward, but for right now, because it's in here, I'm gonna put it there. So after the wellness and the blank tab, we go into the scribble section. So this is about just scribble. I do have a vellum on here that once again, I made. Okay, so I'm gonna clip something over this so that you guys can't see like video list things, but there's not a whole lot I can share in this section, but I did wanna kind of share the inserts that I'm using. So right now, at least in this section, I'm using this social media planner that you date yourself. So I dated it for December and I wrote the dates. It has two little let me see if I can scoot this over. It has two little sections. This one doesn't have little dots to like check things off and this one it does, but they're not labeled or anything like that. So you can use them for whatever you want. And so I use those for videos to post during the month. And then I use this one for mostly like PR postings. And then it has a monthly schedule here. I have been using this mostly for when products come out or when there are sales from companies that I PR for or sales from companies that I follow. And then this section has every week divided with a date, a place to write something, and then done. So I've been using this to write down the videos as I post them. I do have a social media planner, but I don't carry it with me every single day. And so this allows me to keep track of things that I post during the week, maybe when I don't have that with me. And then at the end of the week, I can go back and update my social media planner. I also have this calendar, which is similar to this one, just a different format. So it has a place for contents and it has the dates for every day of the month. And then it has this little calendar. I'm not using this one because I don't really find it super functional. I'm thinking about maybe using it in 2024 though, keeping this for videos and using this for Instagram. And so I can mark the days that I post on Instagram and I can mark what I posted on Instagram. That's kind of an idea. I do post on Instagram, but I'm not as consistent as I probably should be. So I was thinking about maybe adding that and then building out like an Instagram posting schedule where I posted the same thing on certain days to try to help grow Instagram. And so I may use it for that, but it's undated so I can use it at any and time. Then the other insert I have, which I can't show you the other side, is this social media income tracker. So the other side has 2023, this has 2024. You write the amount that you made and then the months and you kind of bar graph how much you made. And then you have the ability to track income from different platforms. And so I could have YouTube and like Amazon affiliates, etc. And it has the months and then you can write the totals. The only thing I think is weird is that it has like the month here and then total here. But this is where I would have written the total, but I guess this is supposed to be for the annual total, but I really wanted the total for each platform so I could see the total for each platform. So I have to either put that at the bottom or white this out and put it at the top because one side, because one part has to have the name of the platform and then the other one has to have the total. Or that's how my mind works. And then after that, I have these checklist inserts. These are one of my favorite inserts. This is where I track video ideas and then I mark off when I've completed them. So across the top, I put film, edit, upload, thumbnail, share to Instagram, those kinds of things as the little categories here. I write the name of the video. I check off here when it's done, done, like all the things are done. But as I go through and film and edit, I check off the status until I get all the way to shared on Instagram. And then it gets checked off here and it gets highlighted off. So I just have a few of those. And then I have a sponsor PR list. I haven't updated this yet, but I need to. But I have two of these. One is for you guys. So the codes and requirements and all of that for the discount codes that I have as being an affiliate to share with you guys so that you guys get a discount when you shop. And so that's what this is for so that it's really important when I post on Instagram because I will sometimes forget when I share to stories what the code is for each affiliate. So that way when I'm posting on stories and I say, hey, use my code Scribble15, I'm giving the right code for the right company. And then the other one is the same, it's just for me. So it's the codes that I have to shop at a discount. So I have two, the other side is for me and these are from Perfective Paper and I love them. I think they're really, really nice. And then I have 
these task pages. I haven't been using these very much. I don't know if I'll keep them in there. I had planned to use them for PR things to make notes on things that I have to PR for and like the due dates, but I find that I don't really refer to them that much. I'm gonna leave them in there for now, but I may end up taking them out. And I have this here and this is discount codes for shops that I love. So when other people that PR for shops that I love have codes, I can keep track of the shop name and their discount code and what the offer is. That way when I go on to shop, I don't forget to use it because I often do and then I'm not saving money. So after that section, which is scribble, which is for my channel, we have reference. This section doesn't have names on it yet, but it will. It does have vellum dividers to divide it into five sections. It will have names, but it doesn't, like I said, yet. But I do have sticky notes with the name of a section on there. I can't show you some of these because you can see the information through the vellum and some of it is private. But this one is for home and routines. So I have a place to set up some routines for our home. And then I have a cleaning planner. And then I have a cleaning schedule, like monthly task thing. And then I have some grid pages for our home. The next section is health. In that section, I just have grid notes to keep some health notes for myself and our family members. The next section is marked with a pink like index tab. This is our school section. I cannot share that with you, but it does have a free printable from Planner B that has information about my kiddo's teacher. And then we have information about what time early releases versus regular dismissal, phone numbers for the office, the nurse, stuff like that. And then the next section is pets. So we have dogs, beagles. So this is about our beagles. And then the last section is going to be entertainment. And that kind of goes back to my inbox back here. This is where like movie and TV show stuff is going to go. And then the very last like main section is notes. I haven't figured out where I'm going to put the gifts and the bill trackers. I may end up m switching this up. And so putting these four down here and these five up here so that I could have my inbox and my sort of brain dump and my shopping and an order tracker and my bill tracker up here. And then down here in the plans, I can have whatever I need for plans. I don't really know where the um, gifts section is going to be. I haven't really figured that out. I may put that in the plan section. I'm not sure. I don't have it figured out. But that is like how I have my setup. It's gotten much less chunky, which is good. We did take out actually quite a bit. Um, so we took out, oops. We took out like over a quarter of an inch, almost a half an inch. So we took out quite a bit. Um, so we took out quite a bit, some because it was used and so it was time to take it out and some because I'm not using that anymore. Like I said, this is going to change a little bit. The overall sections, I don't anticipate changing much. I do think I'm still going to have lists, plans, scribble, reference, and notes. Like I think that's kind of going to be what stays because that's really what I need in here. It's really how I have the lists organized. I'm going to add a little bit to that. And then the plans is going to be where most of it is changing because I'm going to be consolidating and using that anti plans printable. And I think it's going to be much better. I'm still not hundred percent on this little ring thing. I may take it off when I put the anti printables in before I do the next share of my setup and see if I like it better for right now. I'm going to leave it there because it's, you know, it's already in there, but I think it may feel a little less bulky without that extra piece of leather on there. But that is my share of my A6 ring planner setup. Like I said, it's kind of ever evolving, but I do feel good that I've kind of parceled it down and really thought about what I actually need this for and what I want it to do for me. Because I think a lot of times we see all the yumminess on Instagram and on YouTube and it does really look awesome and it may work for those people really, really well to have like all of those photos and super, super chunky where they can't even flip the pages and all of that. But for me, that's not what I want. I may want to put some decor in here just because it makes me happy, but I definitely don't want something so thick that I can't even flip the pages. But before I add much decor and before I add to it with kind of fluff, I guess. I want to make sure it's doing what I need it to do and that the system is the system that I need. And that system is different for everybody, but I am kind of figuring out what it is I need from this. And I'm excited about kind of where it's going. So this is my A6 ring planner. It is a VDS planner. This is my on the go planner, extension planner, brain binder, whatever you want to call it that I carry with me out of the house. This is one of my on the go slash extension planners that I'll be using in 2024. 
I won't be using this every week. It depends on what I feel like using. It also depends on what we have going on that week, what our schedule is like that week, if we're on vacation, things like that. So I will be using several different planners for this purpose in 2024 in various assorted different ways, but they will all function kind of in the same way. So there'll be a planner base that's organized and there are some dates, but it's really just a notebook to throw everything into until I get home and I can put it all where it goes. That's really what it is. So this will be one of them. I will be doing a video on my full extension planner lineup and all the choices I'll be selecting from during 2024. I'll do plan with me's and some of them and all of that. But this is going to be, I think probably one of the main ones, the one that I pick up and go in and out of the most often. I think we'll see once we get into it. I may find that I like one of the other ones better and that this one isn't the one, but I am really liking the ability to just write on pages and then take them out when I'm done and throw them away and not have that feeling of wanting or needing to archive them. And so I'm really enjoying that. And it's been really nice to be able to move things around and section them the way I need them to and just kind of make it my own. But that's my share of my A6 ring planner as it is right now. Like I said, I will be doing another video once I get my Annie Plans printables and I have it set up the way I think it's going to kind of stay at least for a while. And so I will share that because I think that that will be interesting to see how it changed and see kind of how I have it set up for 2024. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to put them down below. I love chatting with you guys in the comments. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss future videos and don't forget to just scribble.